Am I all right? I'm in frame. Yeah, yeah like, just not the, not top, the top of my head. head. I don't need the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. really. Yeah. What? How is the top of her head not in frame? That means the top of my head ain't in frame. No, yours is. If I stand up, I'm gonna look taller than you when you're on there. Oh, yeah, so I lean down a little bit. Mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. bit. That's alright, I'm in there now. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, so it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I'm here with my homegirl, Michaela Skelly, who just won the 2018 Miss Anguilla pageant. So she's a queen. She's royal, a so royal. I love her in my life. Okay, let me. Okay. Okay. Right, here we go. Here we go. So we just got finished doing her makeup for a little reception that's being thrown in her honor for winning the pageant, and I'm so proud of her. We just want to talk to her, get to know her a little bit. So you get what I get. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. I got a can resisted. Oh, crap. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh. So tell me, how have you changed since winning the pageant? I don't know if I can say that I have changed since winning the pageant. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like when I got on stage, or by the time it was go time, show time, I felt like I had already seen this new person, well not a new person, but like a new mindset, mm -hmm. where I'm just now uber comfortable living in the skin that I'm in. So I, I feel like now, since the pageant, I am more comfortable just letting it all be. You know, not having to cover up or act any differently because I'm in the public eye. Yeah. Yes. So, can you tell me about the challenges that you may have faced leading up to your wanting to be involved in the pageant and then the pageant itself? Well, the first major hurdle was what is sponsorship going to look like? after Irma because she was just yeah she had everybody like are we even gonna have a carnival but yeah I don't think I don't think anything could stop Anguilla and the yeah. celebration yeah. of life and just the celebration of being Anguillian um so that was that was the first thing that popped into my head but my sponsor shout out to Mr. Electric Thank you, thank you. Um, my sponsor was like on board from the jump, so that was one less headache to think about. And then there was the issue of, you know, when am I gonna find time to practice? Um, because I was living in England when I decided to enter, and um, some of the contestants had already started making like informal appearances uh -huh. um, and I wasn't going to be in Angola until like a couple of weeks before the show. Right. So it was like, okay, you literally have six weeks or less, <laughs> to turn from <laughs> caterpillar to butterfly. Right. So I think that was the, that was the most challenging thing was yeah, the, the time frame was just so condensed mm -hmm. um, and I had to put in a lot of work on top of being a full-time student, um, doing papers, preparing for my dissertation and all of that. So, well, as you segue into that, let's tell the people what you're studying in school. I am a psych major, I'm a psych graduate. I am in love with the field of psychology. I love studying human behavior. Mm -hmm. So anything within that field and related is what attracts me, like I'm on two of them. Um, currently I'm 
pursuing a master's degree in clinical neuropsychiatry. Beauty and brains, people. Beauty and brains, all in the same package. You understand? Oh, it makes me blush. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to come up with a winning formula to give to the next young lady who wants to follow in your footsteps, what would that be? Winning formula. Step one. Step part one. one. Uh -huh. Team, team, team. You cannot do this journey by yourself. You can try. It's not going to be easy. So you need to have a good team assembled. That's the first thing. Um, second thing. The preparation is going to test you a lot. You will find out things about yourself that you didn't know were there. It makes you reach deep down into the depths of your soul and, <laughs> you know, you just find some, some little gems that were in there that you didn't know existed about you. And then you also find some things out that are like, Mm, I don't really like, I don't really know if I like where this is going, but it's something I have to accept and try to work with and, you know, so, yeah, that's the second thing is to be open to, be open to a lot of self-reflection. Um, sort of an evolution. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let it happen. Just let it happen. And the third thing, ooh, on show night. Please, just put, like when you get on stage, you just leave everything on stage. And once you've left the stage for that segment, forget about it. Okay, so typically, mm -hmm. when people are going into pageants, they want long, straight hair. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about wanting to maintain this natural aesthetic going into the pageant. I, it, for me, it was very important to enter this pageant as me, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, because I didn't want to present someone I wasn't on stage, because I wanted to live in my truth on stage, right. and from here on in forever, <laughs> um, I thought that it was important that I keep my natural hair. Um, so my hair is a huge part of like the journey to accepting who I am as myself. And so keeping that on stage was, it was about, you know, just saying this is me and I live my life now the way I want. That's so what's up. I did add I some length. Hey. For some drama, but I made sure that it matched my texture. Um, but most of it was just she. The shrinkage is mad disrespectful. So, um, and I ain't gonna pull her out because <laughs> if she comes out and she don't pop back up, I'm she, gonna be mad. Ooh, she so, don't pop back. If she don't pop back, I'm gonna be a you little. You talk upset. about how long she sat here to get these curls and <laughs> pep in. You understand? Okay. Come on, Petunia. Um, can you talk to me about your support system and what the reaction was when you said, I'm going in for Miss Angola? Ha, oh, boy, okay. <laughs> well, um, first off, I kept flip-flopping a lot about my decision, mainly because my mommy is my She's my everything. And at first she was a little apprehensive about my decision. And right. so she kept asking me, are you sure this is what you want to do? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And um, she said to me, hey Seagull. She said to me um, when I finally decided, or just before I finally decided that yes, I'm going to do this. She said to me, listen, this, you, you're, if you're doing this for you, which I expect you are, um, whatever decisions that you make, I will be here to support you. Mm -hmm. I may feel nervous about it, I may be kind of apprehensive about it, but I am always here for you. 
Thanks, mom. Love you. Hey. Um, <laughs> but then when I told some of my friends who I had been to school with in Canada, Trent University, some of them started looking up ticket prices because they were ready to just um, descend upon the rock. Um, so a few of them actually made it. One of my friends actually came down from Birmingham wow. in the UK to be here for the pageant as well. Um, and then my family, my mom's side of the family, they went ham yeah. and decided to organize a mini family reunion for the purpose of being here to yeah. make loads of noise on the night of the show. So I didn't have the detractors Good. in my camp. Good. Everyone who I spoke to about it was, they were very supportive. Talk to me about your inspiration for your swimsuit look. Ooh, girl. Okay, so my grandmother, she, um, through her is how we knew that we were linked to this Native Indian tribe in Guyana called the Wapishana tribe. And um, when I first heard it, when she first mentioned it, I was like 12, 13, I, I couldn't be bothered. But then for the show, and even just before the show, I started getting interested in looking into the different, the nine different tribes of Guyana. And I saw um, a lot of photos of Wapishana women and the pretty headdresses that they wore. And then um, my chaperone carrot was like, you got native ancestry? Okay, we, we, both, to, we both to work that in there. Um, and it was, it was quite the, how should I say? I felt like, I felt all the ancestors. Smiling down. Smiling down I feel point. like yeah. I feel like my grandmother was like randomly in Guyana at the time of the show, and then as soon as I came on stage for the Simpson segment, I feel like she was like, "My ancestors are telling me something. What's going on? I feel a little bummed." Um, but yeah, we explored that. We looked yeah, into well. we looked into um, where within Guyana they are found. So they usually found like closer to the Brazilian border mm -hmm. um, in the Roraima region. And we just, we couldn't do absolute authentic Wapishana um, tribal headdress. Um, so I was a tad disappointed not being able to use authentic uh, Wapishana tribal symbols, but look, don't study that. You worked it. Do you understand? We worked what we had. You didn't only work what you had. You worked it. Oh, oh, okay. It's like capital I. It. Ew. I see. Ew. Yes, you worked it. Okay. And all that to say, you ended up with a crown. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. So. Anyway, thank you so much for making time to talk to me. I really, really appreciate you taking time out of your thank royal you schedule to talk to a little of me. So but fast. signing off, we'll have Michaela give you her social media so that you can follow her. So my Instagram handle is at Keela V. So K-E-E-L-A-V-I-E. And you can find me on Facebook under Michaela Skeleke. That's all I got. I ain't got Twitter yet. It's coming. Jordan. It's coming. <laughs> I think. And you already know. Follow me, Storm Jordan M U A. Holler. Wax on. Am I doing this in the right direction? I don't even. Oh, we will. Never mind. I don't know. Stop waxing, y'all. <laughs> Get with the pro brand. Yo, she bought.